As a developer, I build upon several projects and designs which requires testing and powering. Several testing tools can vary as per design and that amount to acquiring different power source and test equipment for different projects. Two years ago, I developed a power system that can cater for my test, probing and powering of electronics. I called it my ultimate power supply. I have used this power system for many project development which you must have seen if you are one of my subscribers and it is amazing to have this system helpful in various project development. One of the things which I don't like about the setup is the physical look. The past material got cracked up when I was drilling it using my hand drill. After the completion of the power system, I knew that one day I would love to rebuild and repackage it using a well refined process which I'm excited to show to you in this video. For the initial development, I shared the design information which you can find from the video notification shown up on this video frame. And in this video, I won't be explaining in details about the previous design as I hope you can assess the material and see the video shortly after this one. I started off this new design by inviting one of my friends who is good at modeling. I wanted him to create a suitable dimensions for the display. From the previous assembly, the external parts were not well fitted by the drilled holes and that is what I intend to correct on this new model. My friend noted all these details and measured every dimensions of the external parts which I'm going to be using. After he completed the modeling, the design was exported and fed into the laser cutter machine in order to cut out the newly designed shape for the casing. The laser cutting process took a lot of time before I could get a complete cut. I carefully removed the paper protection for the cut art frame as I further applied the spray paint to suit the color that I want. With that being done, I completed the rest of the installation as I have the system now looking just like this. The new design now have better off features with respect to the first build and I'm going to demonstrate them to you. Starting off with the primary supply which is powered directly from electricity, I connected its output to my multimeter to read its voltage. There was no voltage reading until I triggered it from the push button. There is a 0.1 voltage difference from the two meter values and that is understandable as the meter in my power supply draws a bit of power from the output in order to visualize the voltage values. Unlike my multimeter that has its own independent power from the inbuilt batteries. The values also correspond as I tested the system using another multimeter. Now, for the secondary power supply, which is powered from the internal batteries, I set it up to read the voltage. The voltage reading was a bit accurate unlike the previous one. One amazing feature that this power supply have is the short circuit protection. This helps protect the batteries and the internal circuitry whenever someone mistakenly touch the two probes. Another feature that I maintain in this development is the cable fault tracer. This indicates to me the wire had got caught internally on a USB cable. As you can see, the lead indicate the only good lines that are not yet cut, while those lead that are off indicate the particular line that got cut internally on a USB cable. 
The mean oscilloscope is also kept in the system as I will still need it, irrespective of the fact that I have already gotten a bigger and a better one. I can always run my power supply once the electricity is gone and that is achieved using the secondary power system which is powered using the internal batteries. Here I'm using a 5V output connected on a USB port to charge a phone or power any 5V based circuit. As I remove the power supply entirely out of electricity, I demonstrated how I can use half of the system to power everything that I will virtually need. The 5 volt output can power both the mini oscilloscope and the bigger one and that is a lot more flexible for me whenever there is no electricity at home. The distance circuitries that I used in building this system will be shared once again and I'm going to be dropping them on the video description so check it out as we download the PDF file which I'm going to leave available for you. Remember to subscribe to my channel if I yet to do so and please click the notification button in order to get personally notified when I make upload on the next project. Like, share and drop your comment as I would love to see your reactions about this particular build. Thank you so much and I will see you on the next project. Do have a blissful day.